watching the show, the first thing that hit me was, um, you know, the green, right? The logo, the money, the, the, the like that's that's the sort of the the first thing that's that's thrown at you about the show, the glamour, the lights, you know, that that sort of thing. Um, I'm curious when y'all, you know, were putting the show together, what sort of idea did y'all have about the show? You know, did, did, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I saw an mm-hmm. interview where um, somebody said like, you know, that y'all's parents thought it was going to be something different, right? Like some sort of like Discovery Channel documentary style or something yeah. about, you know, rags to riches. I don't know, like a David Attenborough, you know what I mean? And it turned out into what it was, which is a great show. Uh, but I'm just curious what sort of talks there were. Did y'all, what sort of hand y'all had in it or, you know? Well, yeah, like, you know, I, I kind of started the project on my own. Uh, you know, I, I always wanted to go to film school. I applied to USC film school. I wanted oh, to right on. live in California. I thought it was cool. And being Asian, my parents were like, Washington, if you go to USC, <laughs> even though my dad has an executive MBA from there, <laughs> or if you go to UT, then that means you're on your own. And I'm like, what, what do you mean? I need you to go to the the interviews with me so I can like, it's a good school. And, you know, my, my father had, you know, a younger brother that went to UT and partied his way out and had some other Asians that went to USC. And so he, he was like, I know you son, like you go to one of those, (laughs) it's going to be over anyway. So I went out there, I slept on one of his, like his uh, military officer from the Vietnam War's couch. Like in a ghetto at home. And then I'm walking into USC trying to act like, you know, all whatever. (laughs) And they're like, where are your parents? And I'm like, they couldn't afford to come here. (laughs) And, you know, the thing was, is that all my life, I'd always wondered what if, what if I really actually tried, you know, to get into Hollywood. And once I had kids, I felt like, (laughs) I felt like, you know, speaking of kids, right? I was sitting in my my office. I thought I made it. You know, my wife's calling me all the time. Like, where are you? Where are you? And I was just miserable because I like wasn't doing something that I thought I might love to do. Yeah. And so I could never tell my kids to search for their passion. So I told my wife, I said, look, I'm going to go to L.A., I'm gonna be late to Oklahoma. And like, she said, like, what? I go, well, my dad told me I could. And she goes, you ain't fucking going to LA, you're going to Oklahoma. Like, we gotta go see grandma. I go, no, that can wait. I'm gonna go look for some marijuana farms. And then like, <laughs> you know, my, and then my dad has a bank out there in Anaheim and Irvine. So okay. on the corporate card, I'm supposed to be looking for potential clients that need financing for real estate hotels. But of course, Washington pulls a Washington and goes straight to Spago, sits at the <laughs> bar with his crocodile boots, with his hat, like down in 1942s. Like, oh yeah, and my dad's like, what are you doing, dude? I'm like, I'm looking for business. And he's like- yeah, I'm solving problems. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm at the bar solving problems. Yeah. Yeah, like, he's like, it don't sound like it. I go, dad, remember you told me if you diversify your portfolio, it would be a lot safer. So I'm going to start looking for movies. And he's like, what? And I go, yeah. And he's like, what's the potential? I said, 30 years and 2 billion. And he goes, what's the risk? I said, I might lose my wife. Oh, jeez. He said, well, go for it then. As soon as he said that, he said, yeah, go for it. Yeah. People, he goes, yeah. He goes, because if your wife, like, if she can't let you search for your dreams and passion and leaves you, then she wasn't right for you anyway. But your kids will always be rich. I got them. You know, just go for it. It's just $250 risk. But, like, at least you can tell your kids you tried. So sure. that's how it happened. But when we were doing the character development, I didn't tell my family I signed these paper, papers <laughs> on behalf of them. And I didn't <laughs> tell them that, like, I wrote the characters that they would be. 
And then I didn't tell my mom that like she had a bigger role than she did. I told yeah. my sister and my wife that, you know, all you had to do is like show that I'm married and I got a sister and it's all good, you know? But, you know, when the producers got to meet the family, they were like, we thought, we thought you were interesting, but dude, your family is so much better than you. <laughs> they look better. They're honest. They're authentic. They're like, so like, and I'm like, I know. I told you that. <laughs> I told so, you that. <laughs> you know, my wife had to prove to the world that she would do anything for her husband. So I said, look, if you don't sign, it just shows like you're not down for me. <laughs> I thought you were ride or die. And then I told my sister like, yeah, Oh yeah, you always look after your little brother, but you can't just like show your face one time. So she signed. Then I, then my dad, of course, he signs right away because he's like, <laughs> me. he like to be famous and the stuff. And then my mom, you know, she has that look like she's, she's got to like, talk about it. She got to think about right. it. Yeah. She's like you and your dad. Okay, this last time, this last time. Okay, last time. And I go okay, last, so time, last time, mom. Last time. And so she signs and, you know, Aunt Tina, you know, I hustled her by saying, look, Aunt Tina, I know you want to pay off, you know, your son's uh, dental school loan, don't you? I go, I don't think <laughs> that's, that's what got her. That's what yeah, I was like, I don't think you can cut enough hair or do whatever you do to pay that off. She but seems look. like she would be all down for cameras, party, right? Like, oh, yeah. it's, yeah. it seems like her world. But I, I didn't bring her into the end. I didn't put her in the sizzle reel. And so I go, and she was like, she started crying. She was like, man, can't believe you think about me like that. I go, you're a hoe. I know how it is. <laughs> you're supposed to pay for your son's education and shit, you know? You're not part yeah. of the world. Yeah. And so she was like really touched. And, and so it, it was natural. And nice. then uh, Sammy, uh, Sammy actually, you know, her, her mom like had passed away, like, a year before. before so i just oh, wanted to be there for sorry her. to hear that yeah and so she kind of lived with us and you know helped me out with all the paperwork and stuff sure. and, you know at the end of the day it was like man we're, we're from texas right yeah i told her i told hbo i said look man come to my hood come to texas let me show you what it's about when they came here you know they were like you know how it is you know and i'm like yeah, you see the horses, you see the cattle. They're like, wow. <laughs> and I'm like, it's going to be cheaper. You're going to get some tax rebates. You're going to open up doors for other people, open up other people's minds in my community that think they can't do it. Yeah, and, good point. And that's what they really loved about Texas and Houston. They love that, you know, it's a, it's a culture that's misunderstood. Yeah, um, Houston's a great city. Doesn't get enough yeah, attention. Yeah. And for us, it was a way for us to kind of pay Houston back for what it's done for our family. That's awesome. And, you know, that's why we really wanted to be based out of here for filming and not traveling and doing all that until we established. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I did was wondering that if they had maybe proposed, you know, you know, basing it all out of L.A. or some, you know what I mean? Some somewhere. But y'all yeah. were like, nope, we're going to stay yeah. H-Town proud. And, yes. you know. Yeah, Dude, it's, it's, where awesome. came from, you know? it's, it's yeah. where the family is based from, and it's a city that gave my father-in-law so many opportunities. So they really wanted to showcase that, and plus a lot of our favorite restaurants and shopping centers. And friends you know? that have supported us yeah. through the years, yeah. and, and we wanted to show them love if we could. And you know, It wouldn't be what, real, right? Like if all of a sudden y'all are transplanted somewhere else and, and supposed right. to act like you're from there, right? Like, and you right. have all, yeah, totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. yeah, I think it also makes it interesting, especially for Texans. Like, it's great, you know, not just for just for anybody, really, you know, to learn about so many different parts of, you know, not just y'all's, you know, culture of Vietnamese culture, but also Texas culture, too. You know, yeah. I know that's the focus, but I think that's great that it just encompasses, you know, a little bit of everything. It's crazy, right? I, I was I went to my uh, in my I was in my office. I went to all the employees, like the boiler room, the traders, the broker sales. And I go, hey guys, <laughs> I guess love what? I found a really good way to save us money on marketing. <laughs> and they're like, what now, Washington? I go, <laughs> yeah. all right, just pretend you're working. I'm gonna film a little bit. We're gonna look rich, like we're balling. <laughs> and then like I'm gonna go out to Hollywood. And then like 
you know, when I get rich, I'm gonna make us all rich and then it's gonna be all good. And then y'all don't have to show up on time no more. And they're like, what? I go, yeah, dude, trust me. One, I'm gonna one be- guy in the back's like, I don't show up on time anyway. <laughs> yes, exactly. And <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I said, I always taught y'all, if you don't, if you don't like, if you don't throw the lure out there in the water, you ain't gonna catch nothing. Like all it is is 250 bucks so that you can like know that you tried or you search for something. It's 250 bucks, but you might get lucky. You never know, you know? And for me, it was just something where I could tell my kids like, hey, always go for your passion at least one time. But when you go, go all out, no matter oh, yeah. what anyone says. Yeah. Sure. And, and, sure. And then this happened and we decided that as a family, how could we help our community? How could we help each other? How could we inspire other people to not be afraid, to not be fearful, to understand that the American dream is alive and well, that the American dream is that we are a melting pot, that it doesn't matter whether you're from New Jersey, New York, Texas, or whatever. As long as you're being yourself, yeah. you're going to be respected. As long as you're being yourself, you're going to be loved. But be able to be courageous enough to do it sure you know yeah yeah that's it, uh, absolutely right point yeah there's absolutely. only one look at you you know you're successful you're well you, 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 let's not get but, carried away here well but like <laughs> yeah. think about it you did you have to do everything yourself right no one well we gotta we gotta it. yeah that's true that's exactly it yeah that that's what my father taught me and my mother as well work hard do it you know do it for yourself uh yeah people aren't gonna do things for you you, you gotta yeah, yeah you absolutely can't if yeah. you want it, don't complain. Go, go get it. You know? Yeah, go get it. Absolutely, a hundred percent. You know, we always say there's no real, at least in our my group of friends or family, like there's no real uh, formula for success. Really, just do it. You got to work hard and do do things. I mean, that, that's that's yeah. it. Bottom line. It's it. that simple. It's uh, really that's. I mean, it sounds like crazy, right? Like end a podcast, scene done, right? It's like that's it. Just get out and do it. You want something? Yeah. Find find the steps it takes to get there and start doing it one step after another, right? That's that's literally it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm curious about this too as well. Um, you know, having uh, you know, my my family is is mixed actually. My mom's from Mexico. My father's from St. Louis, Missouri. So I grew up in a house with two two cultures too. But I understand like, you know trying to live up to one especially in the states right as well um and and seeing the the television show even though i'm not asian uh, i can still relate to a lot of the things because i feel like my family's this like on my mom's side you know and my latin side it's the same same dynamics and same sort of <laughs> yeah like just the cultural stuff like you know y'all talk about in the show of you know what men are supposed to do or what women are supposed to do it's like all it's like oh my god i've heard all these conversations before right it's just like yeah. holy cow this is like it's crazy how much you can relate to it it you know um as well you know yeah, I just would like to just dig deep, deeper into that. What do y'all think about that? Uh, that's, you know, that's what, you know, we're really proud of, actually, is that, you know, we understand that we're just human beings at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, the Asian part was just because for marketing or whatever. But at the end of the day, you know, we cry, we 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 have stress, we have struggles. Yeah. And the yeah. only thing that carries us through is our faith. Um, is is our our trust and and love for each other, our love for fun, because uh, at the end of the day, you know, when you come from different cultures like you, there's always that. I feel like it's actually an advantage. It makes you stand out. Sure, and you use that to your advantage. You know, yeah. I feel like this country is built on immigrant backs, right? So. You know, we, I think, I feel like every second generation immigrant that's born in America has that struggle between, you know, living in America and what we're used to and what you're seeing every day and then coming home to a family that's traditionally, you know, yeah. um, Mexican or, or Italian or Vietnamese or, you know, Chinese and carrying those cultural through your yourself, you know, and finding that self between that balance. Like I am not well versed in in Vietnamese. I can speak enough to speak to my parents because I had to. My parents didn't 
learn English until they got here, you yeah. know, and I'm trying to pass it to my kids because they will learn less than I will, yeah. you know, learning the Vietnamese language. And so it's just keeping that culture alive. Sure. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. And this is just our story of, of how we do it in our family, you know, like the traditional holidays that you saw on the show, like uh, Lunar New Year. Yeah. That, that's so big in Asia, you know, in, in Vietnam, I think they shut down for a whole week. You know, my nanny's month, already asked month. a month. Wow. It, it's huge. It's all, huge. All, all of Asia shuts down for a month. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. Because everybody from the small towns, they go back to visit their family. I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's so, yeah. bigger than New Year's here in America, you know, where you just, <laughs> you just celebrate for one day and then. Yeah. The day, and that's it. <laughs> totally. Like, this is, yeah. So it's huge in the wow. Asian culture. Wow. And so that's to cool. for us to celebrate that here is a big deal. And of course, you know, we can't stop working for a month. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> I wish, I wish, totally. you know, but you know, my nanny's already asked off for the whole like week and I'm like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I'm giving you a break. I could have asked for the month. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, that that's great. I you know, I love that. Yeah. Finding that balance. I love yeah. that. I think, I think that's why a lot of people love the show too. 